ahead and um, let Annie kick us off here. She's our COO here at Claim Academy, and she is kind enough to um, give us a little introduction to this evening before we really get started. Great. Thank you so much, Olivia. I am so excited for this event. Um, so the mission here at Claim Academy is to change lives. And I come from, you know, the startup technical world. And, you know, when I came to Claim Academy, this was an exciting mission for me, especially, you know, changing the lives of women in this industry. So I don't want the mission of Claim to end at just changing an individual's life. I want it to extend to changing the industry of tech and really allowing more women to be entered into this market. There's a huge need for it. I see the gap in software engineers and I'm so excited to kind of hear from the women we're gonna hear from tonight and their path to like break through into this industry and the challenges that they've had. Um, I think you guys are really gonna enjoy our, um, our panelists a lot. Um, we have over 80 people that registered for this event. So it's gonna be, you know, really hopefully an interactive event. Feel free to drop questions in the chat. Um, myself, Olivia and Lynn Coleman um, are all going to be monitoring those questions. And we'd love for you also to interact with each other, network with each other. This is a great forum for us to start building a connection so that we can all work together to increase the number of women in technology. So with that, I'll hand it back over to Olivia so she can kick off the event. And thank you everyone so much for joining. Of course, Annie, thank you for your kind words. Um, we are really excited to uh, kind of be building up the tech industry in St. Louis and adding new female talent into that is of course just going to improve things even more so than we have already improve them. So I am going to go ahead and ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves. And um, with that introduction, if you can just go ahead and cover, please, your current title, uh, your current employer, and then just the question that we always have to start with anytime we have a women in tech event of how did you get started in tech? And then what experiences led you into the career field that you're currently in? And we can start with Charmaine since you are number one spot on my square today. <laughs> Hi guys, um, or girls. I'm Charmaine Burris. I'm a software engineer, software development engineer at MasterCard um, and a really recent graduate of Claim Academy. And I would say I had kind of a long windy path to tech really. Um, I've always had an interest in, you know, helping others and contributing to the greater, greater good and kind of cheesy stuff like that. Um, so the first part of my career was in uh, both the nonprofit sector and education sectors. And after a while um, working in both of those sectors, I just started to feel like I was putting in, you know, so much time, had such high levels of stress um, for very low pay. And I just started to look, I had quite a few um, friends and my fiance were developers. And, you know, I kind of really saw their work-life balance and how great that was. And I was like, huh. But I wasn't sure that I'd really be interested in tech uh, until I started working with SQL scripts on one of my, in one of my positions. And then I went to a hackathon here in St. Louis. And that's when I really just realized how great of a skill coding is and how versatile. Um, it really allows you freedom in your career, but also allows you to contribute to a lot of causes that you're interested in with a really solid skill set. And so that's what really convinced me. And I started taking classes on Coursera, uh, took some Java courses. I liked it a lot. And then I heard about Claim Academy. And so I enrolled in the boot camp. I did the full time boot camp. Uh, so that was 12 weeks long. And I graduated in August. I got a job offer in August, and I've been working at MasterCard since early September. All right, excellent. Thank you, Charmaine. And let's go to Ashley next. Hey, can everyone hear me? All right, um, I'm Ashley Ulrich. I work at Nestle. I am a partner productivity management lead. It's a long 
word for vendor management globally for warehousing. Um, so uh, I got started in tech, actually. I, I'm an engineer by degree. Um, so I went for chemical engineering to Mizzou. Um, and I've always been kind of parallel to tech, um, especially working in warehouses and factories. Um, I would say how I jumped, made the jump, was um, I helped make uh, proper uh, processes paperless and also introduced a lot of automation into warehousing and factories um, uh, through different things. So um, my biggest thing I, I did was help with an SAP uh, implementation, but I was on the business side. Um, I was very uh, connected to that and they kind of brought me over to IT after that and they're like, you belong over here. So that's uh, that's kind of how I made the jump. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how I got here and, and where I am right now. All right, excellent. Thank you so much. Yep. And we're going to toss it over to Christy next. Hi, thanks for having me and congrats on your new job, Charmaine. That's a that's a big win. Um, I know. So I my name is Christy Roth. I am a recruiter through TDK Technologies. So I work with a variety of, of companies, mainly in the St. Louis area. MasterCard is certainly one of them. I uh, have a couple people over at Nestle too, and they're some of my favorites, along with uh, Centene and Edward Jones. And I also had a very roundabout way of getting into IT. And if you would have asked me when I was 18 that I'd be where I am, I, I would, <laughs> I'm not sure I would have believed you, but you know, I, Recruiting can be interesting in a lot of ways, and but I think going back to, I really wanted to make a difference, and IT was extremely intimidating, and I didn't realize that I could make a difference in IT. And in a very long-winded way, I went into customer service from getting my bachelor's degree, realizing that I'm really good at business and, and connecting with people. I somehow <laughs> ended up in recruiting and then into IT recruiting knowing after seeing and, and having the challenges that women can go through, I realized that was the industry I wanted to be in. All right, perfect. And Samia, I think there you are. <laughs> Your camera had gone out for a minute. I'm gonna let you uh, finish us off here with this first question. Sure. Hello everyone, this is Samia working with Claim Academy as a Java instructor and mentor. Before working here, I have worked for different companies like Charter Communications, Deal Machine, and many other software tech companies where I have learned much and digging more into the technology, more, mostly in the software field. So my career started not because of what I have to do. Uh, initially, I was interested in teaching. Later on, I was, I was into my bachelor's of computer science there my passion for programming has started and then I was thinking why I can't choose this as my full-time career and with that interest I have come here to United States and have done my master's in computer field and then with having expertise in different programming language I have landed in my different dream jobs and then right now I'm here in Claim Academy teaching people uh, most of Java and React stuff and I'm really enjoying it and and uh, yeah, I'm so happy for being here. And it's not easy to be part uh, till here because I have so many ups and downs to reach here and so many milestones so far. Yeah, that's how I didn't give up in any of the milestones and I'm here right now, finally. Yeah. Right, excellent. And of course we appreciate your service here at Claim, um, helping out our students. I know, especially with that React piece of it, she's a huge help on that. <laughs> Um, and so I, the way that we're going to go ahead and format this, um, I'd like to spend some time just going over a few questions for each of you um, and then open it up for a Q&A sort of session towards the end as long as time allows. So Ashley, I'd like to start with you. Um, can you talk a little bit about how your position and your space in IT has allowed or maybe it hasn't allowed you to have a good work-life balance? Uh, I would say um, right now I'm able to work from home, which is I'm very fortunate of. And um, even before all this, I was able to work from home. Um, so it was really 
nice. Um, my role is global, so I have to support multiple hours. So I have um, good managers and a good team that understands, hey, I might flex to European hours uh, this week. I'm flexing to Australia hours. Um, you know, this time I'm working, you know, US hours this time. So I have, I'm lucky to have a really great team and really great managers that support me in that and help me be successful there. Um, I also, um, I block time for myself. So um, if I, I work out at 6.30 every morning, so I block that time and I, you know, I people usually respect it. Um, I And I usually block my working hours. So depending on which time zone I'm working, um, but yeah, I would say I have a good team and I have a really good manager and she's very supportive. Well, I applaud you for working out every morning at 6.30. That is <laughs> difficult. <Try. laughs> um, let's go over to Samia with the same question of how do you manage your work and life balance in, of course, 2020 is insane, but uh, just in general in the field of IT. Yeah. Uh, so many people are saying that it is very difficult to uh, manage the work life in IT, but I personally felt like managing work life in IT is much more better than when comparing with different areas, because in uh, especially a technology field, they'll give us the flexibility of working from home and decent work environment and uh, discovering the new things. And especially our managers, they really understand it. It just depends upon the team, how we are balancing our life to sometimes if you are ask in the tech technology field like if the team is not helping you out even then situations go crazy but yeah we should we should just handle and keep the things like writing out the time sheets and what we need to do at the exact time if it is there might be some companies who will tell us to work from nine to five for sure but there are also companies uh, who will give us the flexibility to work to take two hours half off in our work time and work sometime during nights whenever we are free or by balancing the things which we are going through in our personal life so that that kind of situations will uh, be giving us the work-life balance by having the decent working environment and discovering the new things in the technology and it is also depends upon what you are giving to your team taking that flexibility what what are you coming up with the new ideas and new things for your technologies? For example, there might be a situations where you need to jump in at the situation by giving more of the help than required. So if you are doing that, obviously your team is going to help you out when you really need some kind of breaks. So that's what I have felt like. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely hear you whenever you're saying being able to, you know, almost extend that same grace to your team members is going to be so huge. And of course, this year has showed us all how important that grace is. Um, let's go over to Charmaine as one of our newest grads here. I would like to just get your opinion on some of the benefits that you've come across of getting into the tech field today? You mean at the present moment? Just at the or time in which you jumped in, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, a huge one for me was the work-life balance. I feel like compared to at least working in nonprofits and working um, in education, it's a much better uh, work-life balance. I uh, don't feel, you know, the pressure, I feel like the uh, the expectations are very realistic and I also have a, a good relationship with with my team and with my manager and um, and with the processes you know we use agile and safe framework and so the when we're planning uh, the stories or planning the work that I'm going to take on uh, I really have a I feel like it's it's very realistic um, other things I just feel like uh, you're never going to get bored. Like you always are going to be learning new technologies. And as a person, I always like learning new, new things. And I feel like in technology, you're really rewarded for that. You're rewarded for taking on challenges, being the person that, you know, can be the go-to for a certain uh, application or a certain technology. Uh, so those are the two big ones. I feel like you're really rewarded for uh, taking on new learning and the work-life ba balance is awesome. All right, perfect. Yeah, I, 
I definitely know in the conversations I've gotten to have with you, you said that that work-life balance is a huge thing for you. So that's really great to hear that you're able to um, achieve that with your current position. Right, and Christy, you know I'm coming for you next. Um, <laughs> can you go into um, a bit of a detail about what advice you would give to someone who is looking to grow their career in technology? Maybe they're looking to get to that next step in their career path um, and they're ready to make that change. So I would say it just kind of depends on where they're at in their career. I talk with a lot of people who have been doing it for 20 years, some people who are fresh out of Claim Academy and, and it just, it's interesting. So I usually say, start with a path that you want and, you know, make it targeted because I think one of my struggles and, and why it was such a roundabout way of me getting where I am is because I didn't have a targeted approach. I didn't know how to write a resume. I didn't know how to connect with people on LinkedIn. And as much as it's a good and a bad thing, it's a lot of who you know. So I've met with a lot of people kind of in mid-career who unfortunately have been laid off uh, and they're kind of thinking, what am I going to do? You know, it's a pandemic. I need health insurance during a global pandemic, you know, and I, you know, I sat down and she was in healthcare. So frankly, I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to, I wasn't going to get a job to really submit her to. But what we did is, you know, we just sat down and I said, what are some of the companies that interest you? What are some of your strengths and your skills? You know, make a SWOT analysis and think about what do you want in your day-to-day? -day? Is it work-life balance? Is it pay? Is it a particular opportunity to work with a new piece of technology or a new skill? And hone in, you know, look at different social media sites, Glassdoor, LinkedIn, Indeed, and, and find out what they're working on. And don't be afraid to connect with people. And, you know, don't ever hesitate to reach out, I think was a hard thing for me was, you know, where do I want to go? Okay, I want to be in a field that helps people, but how do I get there? You know, make it, figure out where you want to go, who you know that does that, and connect with them. Never be afraid to start a new conversation. All right, excellent. And, you know, I'm glad that you brought up uh, the concept of networking. I think I'd like to start with that next. Um, Ashley, can you speak to your experiences using social media um, to help connect you and maybe broaden your um, network as far as your career goes? Yeah, I, I would say um, I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um, I, if people reach out to me, I usually will take a, a coffee or, or whatever. Um, also, I found that if I reach out to people, most people are open to it. Um, even internally at Nestle, um, I mean, it's huge. There's 325,000 people globally. Um, if I, I've reached out to people, we use Workplace, um, which is like Facebook uh, for work. And then uh, I'll just reach out and like, hey, I, you know, I want to know more about this career or what you do or what your group does. Um, I've done a lot of coffees throughout my career. And kind of like Chrissy said, it's like, it's who you know and who you connect with. And people remember, oh, she offered to help me. Uh, you know, that's how I've gotten some different partnerships, jobs, um, just different connections. So just reach out, just give it a shot. I'm an extrovert also. So like for me, it's, I, I have no shame <laughs> in getting rejected. So I'm like, oh, all right, on to the next one. So I would just say, just give it a shot and uh, have some questions in mind and let people talk, that people like to talk about themselves. So just, you know, have an idea of what you're trying to, to learn about. So yeah, just reach out. <laughs> All right, excellent. And with that in mind, anyone who is interested in reaching out to um, other members of the chat tonight, go ahead and just put your LinkedIn or your name that you have on LinkedIn in the chat box. People, I promise they will add you <laughs> and it, we can get some new connections and support amongst everyone here tonight. Um, let's go back over to Charmaine. Um, can you talk about how you have found the right support for you to start your career in tech? That's a good question. Um, I really feel like I did a little bit of everything um, and that's kind of what you, you need to do. I feel like you never know where your next job is gonna come from. 
Um, you can't be like, well, I'm definitely going to find my next job through a connection on LinkedIn, or I'm definitely going to, um, you know, just talk to my instructors at Claim and see if they've heard of anything. You have to do all of the above. You have to, um, you know, reach out to anybody that you personally know uh, that's a developer or friends of friends. Um, having any kind of mutual connection always helps a lot. When it comes to LinkedIn, I would definitely send messages. Don't just connect with people, but actually find something that you have in common, whether it be a mutual connection, whether it be a mutual interest. Uh, for me, I used to work at the International Institute of St. Louis, and I saw quite a few people that had volunteered there. So, you know, I'd send them a message and say, oh, hey, we uh, both spent time there. Uh, I'm having a career. I'm making a career transition now and just asking to meet up. And I, I've done that. It is harder now when you can't meet up for coffee, but I have done a couple of those via video chat. Um, you know, during the pandemic. So I really do feel like people are open to it, uh, but just get yourself out there really in every direction because you you just don't know where the opportunity is gonna come from. So just do a little bit of everything really. Yeah, absolutely. I know I've had a couple of virtual coffees as well. And, you know, I'm kind of fine with it because I can just wear my slippers and like kind of hang out. <laughs> and it's not like I wasn't doing that anyway. <laughs> um, oh. And one more yeah. thing too, uh, yeah. reaching out to recruiters, like don't be afraid, don't just wait for recruiters to reach out to you, you can reach out to them as well um, and they can be excellent connections. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's actually how you and I were introduced over the summer before I got into the position I hold currently. And it's just been so excellent to see how you have progressed in your career at that time. Um, Somya, I'm coming your way next, all right? <laughs> um, so I was hoping that you could kind of give us um, your opinion on how, I'm trying to think of the pro uh, proper way to phrase this really. Um, do you feel like you have ever either been in a situation or felt a certain energy or dynamic in a workplace um, that has made you uncomfortable as a woman? Or have you always felt very welcomed and, um, you know, needed in that environment? I know there, it's not really a secret that we need more women in tech. We need our voices heard here. Um, yeah. So I wanted to see what your experience with that has been like. Uh, for now, so far with four years of my IT experience, so far, wherever I went, they were so much welcoming, so much welcoming, which I, I sometimes I would even feel like I do I really deserve all this love from them? But, <laughs> but really, I was welcomed at every place wherever I go. And especially the internships, which I have done in my starting of my career, they used to really treat my treat me like baby, they would they wouldn't use to even uh, uh, force me doing something like which I'm not comfortable in something like wearing different hats in technology field. It's not like I'm going to do only in one single technology. There might be a situations that I need to learn something new and jump into that and fix those issues being an intern also. So being an intern, I used to be like, oh my God, uh, this is all very new to me, but they used to boost up me with so much of encouragement uh, by giving experiences, by giving their experiences, by solving the issues with me they didn't let me alone in the bunch of the programming things they, they were with me in all through the steps so everywhere where till now in whatever company it was I, it was very welcoming uh, and they used to be with me in whatever the issues sometimes there might be a production issue where I need to be jumping and working all through over the night but at least there used to be one senior developer who is working with me, at least in the starting stages, which used to boost my energy levels up. So till now there are only positive vibes. So I didn't experience anything negative so far. Hoping for something new in future. <laughs> yeah, that is so great to hear. I always love to hear that you have not run into any problems in your career mm -hmm. um, as we want our workplace to be just as welcoming as possible for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for sharing that. And Christy, I do have a question for you. Um, it may be just a touch personal. I feel like since I have known you for a little bit, That's okay. Um, it's okay to ask you this. Um, but I was wondering if you would be able to share with us any feelings or experiences of imposter syndrome that you've run into while working in this industry. 
Yeah. And I think, honestly, that was one of the questions that stood out to me. So I'm okay with being called out on that. Um, I would say I am naturally a very confident person. And, you know, one statement I would say as a recruiter is, ladies, don't ever be afraid to ask for what you're worth because you've worked hard and you're going to keep working hard. With that being said, am I always the first one to ask for that myself? <laughs> Uh, you know, and flexibility, I'm a full-time mom and my husband is a city fireman and is in the National Guard and has gone on one deployment, could go on more. And imposter syndrome is something that I feel like some people talk about as if it happens like once or twice, or, you know, maybe you, you, you have it once and then you work through it. That I feel like it's always going to be there in some way or another. And you sometimes you just have to take a step back and realize, like, I've made it this far. I can keep going. And I would also add that IT in some ways has been more welcoming for me as a woman and as a working mom and all those other things that I am in comparison to other industries. And and Olivia knows my my story and my soapbox on that. But, you know, I would say... Imposter syndrome stands for, you know, being a mom, being a wife, being a developer, and and you do belong to be there. You do belong to sit at the table, and, and you do deserve to be creating that innovative tech, just like everybody else. All right. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> um, I appreciate you uh, getting a shorter soapbox today <laughs> for your comments. Um, I am going to bring it back over to Ashley. I think we're probably just going to do one more circle around for questions and then open it up for any Q&A that we may run into here. So Ashley, can you talk a bit about um, your experience finding a mentor, someone that can kind of help you grow your career? Have you had that experience? If not, I have another question for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I am. Uh... I, um, I think it's important to have multiple mentors. Um, I watched some TED Talks some, like a long time ago, and it was about basically having like an internal mentor and kind of sponsor and uh, somebody that's not in your company that's a mentor, a friend, like you, a acquaintance. You need like multiple uh, perspectives. Um, on things, especially like career, um, or like if you're going through something challenging at work, I think it's always helpful to get a good balance of perspectives. Um, for me, it's just, uh, you know, like I said, I, I do a lot of different coffees or happy hours, virtual, you know, in person uh, previously. So, um, or if I was in a training or a conference and I really connected with someone, it was just building that rapport and that relationship and following up and still connecting. Um, it's not just a one-time meetup, it's multiple times you're talking, you're gaining that rapport. Um, and it's people that I respect it and, or I admired. And I'm like, how do I get to that spot? Or, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, this is something I admire how you handled that situation. That's some things like somebody that's opposite of me, that's more internal and introverted. They're, they're like, they handle things a little bit uh, more internal, more like people in IT that I work with, especially in supply chain IT. Um, so I'm like, you know, how can I communicate this better? Sometimes I have a lot of energy and I come off really intense. Um, how can I tone this message down? Or how can I, you know, get people to speak up a little bit more? Um, so I think it's it's good to have different people internally, externally, friends, acquaintances to give you a rounded uh, perspective, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I've actually seen that TED Talk that you were talking about, <laughs> um, about having multiple mentors who are, um, some folks are looking to have um, a connection with this person a couple times a month, sometimes or like once a year. Uh, you never really know when you're going to need that piece of advice and whenever you're able to commit to that relationship. So I, I really like what you had to say about that. 
Um, and uh, I would say yeah. gender balance too, not just all women. Mm -hmm. You need to have also uh, male mentors, especially for me in supply chain IT, it's very still heavily male. And so it's good to have someone that kind of takes you under their wing and, and helps you out and kind of shows you the political ropes, uh, especially. So it's good to have that gender balance too. Yeah, absolutely. There are so many great male mentors out there. Um, a couple of the mentors that I've had have all been males as well. And so um, that is absolutely true. And Charmaine, I'm coming back your way. Um, so I wanted to ask just a little bit about your time here at Claim, right? So I was wondering if you felt that Claim was able to give you um, more flexibility to kind of manage all of the aspects of your life while you were going through there? Uh, while I was at Claim, I mean, when, when you're in the boot camp, no, it's going to be all, <laughs> all the boot camp. Um, but it, I mean, allows you to get into a position a lot more quick, quickly, which was really important for me. Um, for me, I was uh, a teacher. And so I had, I have to sign contracts for a year. And so I knew at the end of this past year that I did not want to come back, but I was like, well, I only have three months to, you know, uh, get a new job. So the, uh, the turnaround that you can have with your career uh, so quickly going through a boot camp like claim, I thought was, uh, was incredible. Uh, they really give you the skills to, you know, build applicate. It's it's very it's almost like um, I'm blanking on the word like vocational uh, education. So you really learn how to uh, actually build applications. It's very hands on, um, and so that was awesome. At the same time, you need to be aware that you know there is some background knowledge that you're missing, and you need to be responsible for continuing your learning after your boot camp. But uh, yeah, for me, it was really just incredible how quickly I could do my career change. Yeah, but absolutely. During, but it was intense. <laughs> during the boot camp, it was a lot because, you, you know, you're, you're learning everything through claim, and then you also need to fill in gaps for yourself. You need to also network. Um, and so it, it's definitely a lot. Yeah, I know um, every time that I see a cohort go through, I'm just completely blown away by the amount of progress that they make in the 12 weeks while they're here. <laughs> um, I would say one more thing, sorry. Um, yeah. I think it is important though to uh, give yourself a break. So don't let yourself get overwhelmed because that, that is how you're gonna burn out. So definitely I would you know, put my computer away at the end of the night and you, did, you know, just like log off mentally and still make time to do things that you enjoy, you know, uh, as your hobby. So don't don't make it at your entire <laughs> life because that will be how you burn out. Oh yeah, absolutely. You definitely don't want to burn out before you even start your career, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, let me see. Uh, let's go back over to Samia. Uh, I am curious to know what excites you the most about the future in technology? Okay, for me, yeah, I was, yeah. Always, <laughs> I was always excited to be a woman who is in a topmost position, especially in the managerial level, where handling multiple developers and project managers. So I, I'm seeing myself somewhere there in my future, like uh, having good expertise and knowledge on the programming and technology field, where giving opportunities for women to not only for male dominant company, I want to always encourage women into my uh, team or wherever I am, if they are really capable of and I just even want to see women in one of the topmost positions uh, by by giving them more opportunities more flexibilities there are also so many women who won't come out of their house uh, especially back in my countries there are still girls who are not allowed to come out for education so I want to bring out those women especially giving them more opportunities for learning by uh, giving counseling for them by giving counseling for their parents that it is okay to be your child into a smart company smart technologies and all that's that's where i'm seeing myself in future 
Right, excellent. I completely agree with you. We need to make sure that we are bringing the next generation up in the way that, you know, we wish that our mothers and fathers would have had that opportunity. And so that is really excellent to hear. Um, Christy, I am coming back to you again. I know earlier you had mentioned um, that you are a full-time mother on top of balancing uh, your husband's crazy, crazy work and of course his service to this country, which I applaud, and of course your job. So can you talk a bit about some of the ways that you found to have that family time while maintaining um, your high-level career and allowing your husband to do the same? It's difficult. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's very difficult. And I think aside, you know, I think a lot of the panelists here have really given some really great advice. Um, and so I would definitely follow, I mean, blocking your schedule, maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Those are very big of maintaining a longevity, you know, a sustainable growth. Uh, you know, a lot of the biggest thing I would add is find a good, stable support system in work and out of work. Um, and, you know, as you grow and you go through life, sometimes that's more difficult than others. But, you know, Olivia and I used to work together and, and we're still part of that support system. And, you know, I have a I have a couple of great friends on his side that are first responders and are women. And it's exciting to be able to tell my son, like, hey, look, she's a firefighter too. She's a paramedic. She's a soldier, you know, and I think adding positive influences is, is a really big thing because sometimes when you get stressed and overwhelmed and, you know, I'm a, I'm a big workaholic to say the least. I, sometimes I need to, you know, like tonight was also, is also very refreshing for me because I was working up to the wire and, you know, it was kind of like looking over like, what can I say? What value can I bring? And sometimes when you are very stressed and you've been doing this for a week or two, you know, think about those breaks. What do you need to fill up your cup? And because if you keep pouring it out, there's going to be nothing left. And I know that's a very overused metaphor sometimes, but you bring value to the table and how can you put value back into yourself too? Yeah, absolutely. I, I have, kind of gathered just from the experiences that I've had um, in my short time in the tech industry that as women, we have so much value to bring, but we tend to bring it into every area of our lives at 100% every day. And that's where we run into burnout. That's where things start falling through the cracks. So I absolutely agree with you. Being able to fill your own cup up along with giving to all of the different areas of your life that you want to give to is going to be very important. So thank you for that. And I believe what I'd like to do at this point is open it up to some Q&A um, based on kind of our experiences earlier with the technical malfunctions. I am going to suggest that the folks who bring up some of the questions that we've received um, Annie, I'm going to have you bring that one question up that you had messaged me about, and I will try to open the chat on my end, which is what crashed my computer last time, and see if it works. <laughs> no worries. I can definitely um, relay the questions that are coming up in the chat if you don't want to chance it, because, you know, I know how that goes. Uh, so a couple really great questions that people actually private messaged me. I'll start with, which was... Um, uh, and it's probably maybe geared towards Christy and maybe even Olivia, since you come from the technical recruiter background, but anyone, please chime in. Um, how do you transition to the IT field when you've earned a, a sought after certificate, but you don't have experience in the field that some uh, employers might require? Christy, you want to start that one? <laughs> So I am one of those people, I absolutely love education. And if it didn't cost an arm and a leg, I'd probably be in school for the rest of my life. Uh, and so that question is extremely close to me because I, I completed a six month course 
with eCornell and project management. Cause I too, you know, like Sonia mentioned, like see myself, you know, leading big teams and accomplishing great things. And I thought, you know, I have a bachelor's degree, I have a master's degree, and now I have this huge certificate and over 120 hours, but nobody's going to hire me as a project manager, right? I have kind of pseudo experience. What I had been doing was leading projects as a recruiter, knowing that I wanted to get into IT. So I, I leaned on my strengths of how to get there and who I knew um, and get creative. And sometimes, you know, it's kind of a matter of researching the companies that might be more open to somebody who doesn't have all the experience, um, reaching out to some friends or their parents uh, who might have some connections other places. Um, I was actually just having this conversation with a guy who's an Informatica developer considering entering recruiting, which kind of blew my mind. But, you know, I said, get creative with your summary. Talk to people, you know, uh, put one thing that I did not realize is some people create one resume and they submit that resume to everywhere, but it doesn't say you're, you know, that tells one story and you're a human with a whole lot of stories to tell, you know, I said, you know, he's like, I, I've never done anything in HR, you know, put it in your summary. Have you hosted meetings? Have you talked to people? Can you build relationships? You know, all of those great things and, and get creative with it in an honest way that you can explain it. <laughs> uh, and, and again, just connect with people. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, Annie, I know that you wanted to follow up with Charmaine just as to how she's recently gone through it. So getting some ideas there, but piggybacking on what Christy brought up of someone says, I have no experience. I worked in retail before I worked in, um, you know, a, a labor industry. I've never had a job at a computer and a desk. And I'm like, okay, well, did you work on a team? They're like, yeah, I, I led team meetings all the time. I'm like, okay, well, why aren't we bringing that up? That's huge. It's not like teamwork's ever going to go out of style. You know, we have to make sure that our transferable skills are being listed on your resume. Um, two years ago, I could not tell you what Java was. I would assume that you were talking about a coffee shop. And <laughs> now at least I'm able to write resumes that are legible, um, that kind of list that skill out. So that's kind of where... I usually go with that. Um, Charmaine, I muted myself by accident. <laughs> you, you had clearly some success with um, being able to fill in those gaps. Can you let us know how you went about doing that? Yeah, um, from a developer's perspective, you need to do projects and you need to list them on your resume. They need to be like center on your resume. Um, so for you know, people that are looking into getting into development, I would look up uh, Andy Sterkowitz on YouTube. I actually, it's Andy Sterkowitz, I'll type it in the chat box, but I actually looked at his uh, video of how he designed his resume and I formatted mine similar. And yeah, I had uh, really good luck with it. So I did uh, two projects in Claim, but I also took the initiative to do projects outside of Claim. Uh, make sure that the skills that you listed and the technologies that you know, that you include um, under your projects, which technologies you use, and then make sure you know those projects inside and out because they're going to ask you about them in the interview. And if you can explain those really well in the interview, uh, it will take you really far. Because I actually remember my MasterCard interview, somebody was, you know, I explained my claim uh, capstone project. And one of the guys was like, you did that all in two weeks? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, so just being able to explain that you really understand this technology and how to use it and that you can build something that um, that will take you really far. And that's something that you can do by yourself. A claim helps a lot, but you can, there's so uh, much knowledge online. And just instead of just watching videos, start building your own things and don't be shy about including it on your resume. Yeah, absolutely. I know Christy, um, to do what is going to be uh, forever ingrained in my brain. Uh, as far as the skills go, if you're like, I used Java and React. I'm like, well, what did you do with it? How did you use that? And so we're absolutely making sure that folks have that knowledge on their resumes before they go out into the world looking for their next position. 
Um, Annie, did we have some more questions from the chat? Yeah, there were a couple more questions. The next one is, does anyone have advice for a college student who is interested in communications and technology? Ashley or Somia, do you, either of you have any ideas on that one? So can I get the question repeated once again? Yeah, the question is just like, do you have any advice for uh, someone who's currently a college student who's interested in communications and technology? Sure. Uh, the main the main advantage of coming into the technology, we should know first the advantages of coming into the technology, being a developer or being a HR manager or whatever it might be. We should know the advantages and disadvantages uh, in front of us, how we are going to experience it, how we are going to continue growing in that career and whether we are, uh, is it our dream job really or just we are liking it to do. So we need to know what are the possible things about doing that and what I personally did while I'm entering into the technology or communicative field is I started learning at work. While I'm working, I also started learning what I'm doing, what are my future perspectives of learning it. And I also started learning outside the work by keeping some at least one or one and a half hour of time uh, giving it for my personal career. Like uh, I can't uh, go in a technology continuously for years or months. We should be always keep updated about the current technology. For example, React is nowhere in a technology when I started my career, but now it is booming. But just because I was learning outside of my work too, I was even capable of doing that right now. And uh, learning doesn't stop only from within ourselves. It also starts by learning from others who are at our working place in different areas of the field and even at the place where we are ability to solve the problems. That is a main asset for our technology, growing more in the technology field. Like we need to be ready to take the new challenges. We need to be ready to take the problems, whatever the, our team is facing off. Then, then, then there we'll be starting the learning career, especially in the technology. Technology is a place like we can't get it just by reading uh, theoretically. It is always uh, gives us the opportunities more when we start doing it in practical sessions. So I would always recommend each and every one who are really fascinated uh, to enter into the technology field to start their career, not only in learning, but also building personally on their systems, typing with their hands. Yeah, that's how I felt. Excellent, thanks. I would to say to too, oh, oh, I, I was going to say too, um, if you want to get involved in communication technology, uh, when I was at Mizzou um, in the School of Engineering, I was part of the car team, the hydrogen car team. And so I would do a lot of campaigns and stuff. So it was the technology piece and kind of the, the car and communicating like, hey, this is the great things we're doing. So find things like that on campus or apps they're trying to launch, um, be kind of an ambassador for that to get some skill set around that. Or if there's a project that you can get involved in in college and kind of help with the communication there, um, that's really helpful. Um, I was a product owner uh, for Master Data when I worked at Worldwide Technology. So I had to do, I didn't know the technology piece and help build that roadmap and communicate it to my business and my users. So those are type of uh, roles that you could look to or people to reach out to to understand how they got there. Um, for if you're in college now and trying to look for something that incorporates communication and technology. That's kind of my advice right now. You're perfect. Yeah, definitely being able to kind of get your feet wet in two different industries at the same time while being interested. And it sounds like you were having fun with the hydrogen car. <laughs> um, I That sounds awesome. So definitely be looking for those side projects, something else to add onto your resume. Did we have any other questions in that chat, Annie? Yeah, there was one more question and it was um, maybe again geared towards Christy. Sorry, I feel like we're picking on you, Christy, but um, anyone else can obviously chime in. But the question is like, how do you feel the future of the job market and technology is for women? Are you seeing a lot of companies actually specifically looking for women and are there a lot of jobs available out there was kind of the gist of the question. Right. Um, before I take it from anybody, did anybody want to 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so there are a lot of companies, um, big and small, that specifically um, kind of have campaigns. Amrin has some. MasterCard has a wonderful program. Um, I would also add, you know, they kind of going back to HR and legal policies, you can't say like, you know, we specifically want to hire a woman for this. It's discriminant in some ways. And, and likewise, it's like, I don't, I can't have a woman for this, you know, same thing. Um, everybody should have an equal opportunity, but there are a lot of companies that are kind of just ready to bring in more, you know, fresh blood and ideas. And, and I would say, I, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've had, you know, again, not to get on my soapbox, I've, I've had a, a rough go with, um, men in, in certain industries, but also you'd be surprised how many of them are really awesome um, and aren't intimidated by strong women. And, you know, kind of going back, Ashley gave a really great piece of advice of gender balance. And, you know, I think a lot of companies are starting to realize like, wow, there's a lot of alpha personalities here. We should, we should be some more, you know, bring in more collaborative ideas and, and talent and communication styles. Um, and you can find a lot of that in a lot of research, uh, Glassdoor, Indeed. When you're also interviewing with other companies, ask about their culture. Ask that hiring manager, what, is, what does culture mean to you? Or how does this team take it in specific? I know Centene is also doing another um, big push for individuals with you know, a variety of disabilities and being more inclusive. One thing that I would be hesitant of is if you're hearing a lot of like buzzwords, like we love everybody or we believe in, you know, where it lacks substance and it lacks genuine. And, you know, if you were to come to me and ask about, you know, women in tech or, um, you know, even, you know, I talk about toxic masculinity and, you know, if you'll hear genuine words, genuine passion without having to cross those blurred lines of things that you can and cannot say in an interview. Yeah, absolutely. I know, um, I feel like everyone has a story or someone they know has a story of just something that's super crazy that's been asked um, of them during an interview. And so, we definitely want to make sure that anywhere that you're going, um, you're staying with companies that have a solid background of wanting to have inclusive um, and diverse teams, but um, maybe not that don't actually have the numbers to back it up, right? And I think I do have um, just a last question for everybody here. Uh, if you were to speak to either someone who is, you know, just out of high school or looking to make a huge change in their lives, or even just to your younger self, um, what would you tell her about going into the field of technology? What advice would you give? Charmaine, if you wanted to get started. Um. I would definitely say, you know, go for it. I, um, everybody that I've come into contact with, and I'm, I'm sure that's not everybody, but has um, been really positive and encouraging. Um, I would definitely say, you know, know your stuff when you're getting ready for those interviews. I mean, you need to really prepare, you need to learn as much as possible, uh, but also start to get comfortable not knowing everything. So you should just always be trying to learn more and more, um, but don't get intimidated when you read, you know, you look up the definition of some technology or something and you don't understand a word of it. Um, you'll start to, as you learn more and more, um, you'll know, you'll, you know, it'll become easier and easier. I remember when I uh, first started taking classes on Coursera, I would look up some stuff on Stack Overflow and I didn't understand any of it. And then I really noticed that I was improving when I could go onto Stack Overflow and, you know, get the general idea and then later I could um, actually really understand what they were saying and apply it. So um, definitely just be hungry to learn, um, but don't worry when you don't, um, when there's still a lot that you don't understand. And if you do a boot camp or you go the traditional route, either way, um, don't 
rely on them to teach you everything. You also need to um, be learning more uh, on the side, whatever interests you. Like, for example, I really like Angular, so I've been learning that more on the side, but find things that really get you interested and uh, pursue those yourself as well. Don't wait for, uh, you know, your school or your job to ask you to do it. All right, perfect. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I too have been on Stack Overflow and thought I was losing my mind. So that's, you know, my journey. Um, Samia, let's go over to you with that same question. Sure. I would definitely say them that failure is the first step of success and we should be ready to take the failure. If we are not ready to take the failure, we can't even taste the success. Like if we don't know the value of darkness, how can we praise the light? So in the same, uh, with, with the same lines uh, going down, we need to definitely find a support group of women who are in the same situations and we need to focus on what you are doing and we need to focus on what we are loving and we should not just do the the things just because it, there is a boom in the current world we should just go into that field if we really love it for example if i might like singing i should go into that field but if i'm not really loving it just because my family is forcing it to do i should not go into that field so you uh, we should definitely be a woman of tech without uh without being making things complicated and tech isn't actually complicated it is just like some simple language which we are speaking like uh, it is just like a language the only thing is we need to focus we need to love it we need to encourage ourselves in deeping uh, digging more into that diving in more into that and we should not compare ourselves with someone who has already re reached the success factor we should always compare ourselves we should always do the best what we can so that we might be even reaching more than them <laughs> if if we just take, keep the targets for reaching only for certain extent we might be reaching only till there but if we don't have that kind of target we might we might reach beyond them so that's what i would definitely encourage for um, everyone to try with unless you try it you are not going to test it yeah yeah absolutely you never know until you try right yeah all right ashley let's go over to you for the last question here yeah i think uh when i tell people they're when they tell me they're interested in going into technology or a career in technology i always tell them you have to be really comfortable with change and you have to be a lifelong learner because we're always creating a proof of concept or an MVP somewhere, and we're always decommissioning something on the other end. So it's like, it's always changing and there's always something going on. Um, I also think you can always find a home in IT. You can be a developer, you can be an analyst, you can be a product or a project manager, a product owner, there's, there's a home for you somewhere. Um, so that's why I kind of tell people it's, you know, be a lifelong learner, be okay with change, and then you, you should be okay in IT, so. Thank you yeah. so much. I yeah, no absolutely problem. agree with that lifelong learning thing. And the things that I've heard about people who have their hands dirty in the code, they're always like, yeah, we're always changing something. Nothing's ever <laughs> staying the same. Nope. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's go ahead over to Christy. Um, then we'll close things out here. So I would say I, I came from a pretty small town where most people you were told that in order to be successful, you had to be a doctor, a lawyer. Um, you know, if you went into it, you were a nerd. And if you didn't know what to do with your life, join the military. Uh, you know, going back to what Ashley said about anybody can find a home in it. I, I wish I would have known that I have always struggled with math and I am not afraid to be a nerd, but I always thought if you're not good at math, you're not going to be, you're not going to be any good in IT, which is not true. Uh, so not true. And I wish I would have, if I would have gone back, I would have told myself, it's okay, go explore. And you will be surprised about all the awesome people you'll meet, all the awesome jobs and projects that are out there. And I've never been one to necessarily be afraid, but math was one of those. And it's okay to not be good at something in IT. You'll find something else. <laughs> yeah, absolutely agree with that one. I uh, I hear a lot from uh, prospective students that are fearful of that same kind of concept about the math and the you know the logic aspect of it. And I'm like, you know, 
we're here to support you regardless of whatever level you're at. And, you know, don't, don't let the numbers be, make you afraid. We'll get you through. <laughs> um, so I really appreciate all of this time that you lovely ladies have given us this evening. We are at our time of six o'clock. Um, anyone who has any additional questions, um, please feel free to reach out to myself. I'm happy to pass along to the panelists. Panelists, if folks reach out to you, I'm assuming that that's okay if they send you a message. Yeah, okay, excellent. So these ladies will be happy to answer any other questions that you have.